For a given triangle, there are six parameters or six measurements that are associated with it. The three measurements are angles. Let's call them angles A, B, and C, all in capital letters. And the remaining three are the lengths of the three sides. Let's call the side that is opposite to angle A, side A, but in small letter. And let's call the side that is opposite to angle B, side B, again in small letter. And similarly, side C is the side that is opposite to angle C. We have learned how to solve for right triangles. Now we're going to learn how to solve for oblique triangles, in other words, triangles that do not have a 90 degree angle. By solving a triangle, we mean that we want to specify all six parameters associated with this triangle. Normally, we can do it if we are given three out of the six parameters, and then we can solve for the remaining three. However, there is an exception. If the three parameters that are given are all angles, and we do not have any information on the side of the triangle, then when we try to solve for the triangle, we will end up with a family of similar triangles, all with the same angles. Therefore, in order to specifically solve for a triangle, we need to know the length of at least one side. And that leaves us with four situations. The first situation is when the three given parameters are angle, angle, and the adjacent side, known as AAS, angle, angle, side. Or angle, adjacent side, and angle, ASA, which can be considered the same as the previous situation, as I will explain later. The second situation is when the three parameters known are side, side, angle, known as SSA. The third situation is when the three parameters given are side, angle, and side, known as SAS. And lastly, the fourth situation is when we are given all three sides of the triangle, known as SSS. So for the first two situations, we can solve the triangle using law of sines. And for the last two situations, we can solve the triangle using law of cosines. Let's first look at how law of sines is derived. For this triangle, let's draw a height of the triangle from point A to the base side A. Based on what we've learned in trigonometry, we know that the length of this height HA equals to B times sine C, but at the same time, HA also equals to C times sine B. Based on this equation, we can derive that the length of side B over sine of angle B equals to the ratio between side C and sine of angle C. Then, we can draw a different height from point B to base side B. And this height, HB, again, according to trigonometry, equals to A times sine C, but it also equals to C times sine A. Therefore, from this equation, we can derive that the ratio between side A and sine angle A equals to the ratio between side C and sine angle C. It is not necessary at this point, but if you wish to, we can draw the third height from point C to base side C. And this height HC, again, following similar analysis, it equals to side A times sine B, but it also equals to side B times sine A. Therefore, from here, we can derive that the ratio between A and sine angle A equals to the ratio between side B and sine angle B. Therefore, we can conclude that for the same triangle, this is always true, that the ratio between the side and the sine value of the opposite angle of this side always stays a constant. And this is known as law of sines. Let's look at this example. 
For this triangle, we know two angles and the length of one side, and we need to solve for the remaining two sides and the remaining angle. As you can see, we know angle, angle, and side. So this is a situation of AAS, but before I mentioned that the situation of ASA is essentially the same thing. This is because when you know two out of the three angles for a triangle, you practically know the third one as well, because the sum of the three angles for any triangle is always 180 degree. Therefore, for this type of problem, the first thing to solve for is the remaining angle, in this case, angle C, because angle C simply equals to 180 degree minus A minus B, and in this case, 72.4 degree. Now we should recognize that we know a pair of parameters, which means that we know one angle and the length of its opposite side, in this case, angle A and side A. This is an indication that we should apply law of sines because as you can see from this equation, if we know a pair of parameters, we can calculate this ratio and we can use it to calculate the other unknowns. Therefore, the ratio between side A and sine angle A is approximately 3.66 and we equate that to the ratio between side B and sine angle B and from here, since side B over sine 46.7 degree equals to 3.66, we can solve for B to be approximately 2.67. Then according to law of sines again, we know that the ratio between side C and the sine angle C also equals to 3.66. Therefore, from this, we can solve for side C to be approximately 3.49. And now this triangle has been solved, which means that we know all six measurements that are associated with this triangle. Let's look at this example. Again, we need to solve the remaining parameters associated with this triangle. And what do we know? We know two sides and an adjacent angle. So side, side, angle. This is the second situation, SSA. Therefore, again, since we know a pair of parameters, angle A and side A, we can apply law of sines. So we can calculate this ratio between side A and sine angle A. And the question is, what do we equate this to? We shouldn't equate this to B over sine angle B because we don't know either of angle B or side B. Therefore, it will not help us solving for either of the parameters but we do know side C, therefore we equate this ratio to the ratio between side C and sine C, and hopefully from here we can solve for angle C. So according to this equation, sine C equals to 15 over 16.6, which is approximately 0 0.903. Now, you can use your calculator to find the inverse sine of 0 0.903 to solve for angle C. But if you do so, this is the result you will get. The question is, according to this result, angle C is an acute angle, 64.5 degree. But according to our drawing of the triangle, it looks like angle C is an obtuse angle. So is this result correct? Don't forget what we've learned about inverse trigonometry before, that the inverse sine function has the range between negative half a pi to positive half a pi, which means that if you use the inverse sine function on your calculator, you will never get an obtuse angle as a result. So what do we do now? Recall, for two angles, one theta prime that belongs to the first quadrant and theta that belongs to the second quadrant, if their terminal sides are symmetric about the y-axis, then theta prime is the reference angle of theta, and they will have exactly the same sine value, which is positive. And what is the relation between these two angles? As you can see, angle theta equals to 180 degree minus theta prime. Therefore, since we can tell that angle C is an obtuse angle, it should be 
180 degree minus the inverse sine of 0 0.903, which is 180 degree minus 64.5 degree that we calculated earlier, and angle C should be 115.5 degree. Now we know two out of the three angles for this triangle. The remaining angle, angle B, can be easily solved as 180 degree minus A minus C to be 27.5 degree. And since now we know angle B, we can apply law of sines one last time to solve for side B to be approximately 7.67. And now, this triangle is fully solved. Just in case you're curious about our previous calculation of an acute angle C, this is what that triangle looks like. As you can see, it has the same angle A, same side C, same side A, but a different angle C. This time, the angle C is an acute angle of 64.5 degree as we calculated earlier. And this is why the SSA situation is known as an ambiguous situation since you can draw more than one triangle that satisfies the same measurement criteria.